Hello everyone, I am Charles, software engineer at Alibaba Cloud. Today we are going to present our work, Take the Edge to the Cloud with OpenYard and the EdgeX Foundry. This is a cooperation project between Alibaba Cloud and the VMware. This talk will be divided into four sections. First, I will introduce the four main challenges of applying Kubernetes to edge computing environment and how OpenYard addresses these four challenges. Then Yixing will provide the necessary backgrounds of EdgeX Foundry and how we combine OpenYard with EdgeX Foundry. And finally, we will wrap up the talk with a demo. So why we need to use OpenYard and why we cannot use Kubernetes in edge computing environments directly. To answer this question, we have to understand that Applying Kubernetes to the edge computing environment requiring us to overcome four challenges. First, how can we prevent the pods from being evicted if edge nodes are temporarily disconnected from the API server? Second, how can API server send requests to an edge node if they are located in two isolated networks? Third, how can we deploy workload by region as system settings or device models in different regions may vary? 4. How can we manage the edge device with different protocols in a Kubernetes native way? We develop OpenYard to address these four challenges. The design principle of OpenYard is extend the native Kubernetes to the edge. Therefore, we won't change the system architecture or any core components of the Kubernetes. In the other words, we will tackle all the four challenges only using the native Kubernetes workloads. In addition, we always keep the goal in mind that we have to support all upstream Kubernetes features. Here is the system architecture of OpenYard. As we can see, to have an OpenYard cluster up and running, we only need to deploy several controllers on cloud nodes, and on each edge node, we only need to deploy Yard Hub and the Yard Tunnel agent. In addition, we provide a command line tool, Yard CTL, to help us to manage an OpenYard cluster. By simply running the Yard CTL convert, all the above components will be automatically deployed. Next, I will introduce each of these components and how they help us to tackle the four challenges. The first problem we try to solve is how can we prevent pods from being evicted when the network connection between an edge node and an API server has been cut off. In the edge computing environment, the network connection between edge nodes and API server can be unstable. However, Kubernetes requires the API server to be tightly connected to worker nodes. If a worker node is disconnected from the API server, or the API server misses several heartbeats from the worker node due to poor network connection, the node will be marked as unready, and the pods running on the node will be erased from the ATCD. Later, when the worker node reconnect to the API server, the kubelets will notice that pods running on it are not in the ETCD, then it will physically evict the pods. This is something we don't want it to happen. To avoid this from happening, we develop YardHub. YardHub functions as a reverse proxy and a local cache that is deployed on each edge node. After it is up and running, we will connect the kubelets to the YardHub instead of connecting to the API server on the cloud. During the runtime, the Yard Hub will keep checking the healthiness of the network connection between the edge node and the API server. If the network between the edge node and the API server is stable, Kubelet will talk to the API server directly and synchronize the pod state as it does in the native Kubernetes. In the meanwhile, the Yard Hub will cache pod states in the local cache storage. If the network between the edge node and API server is cut off, the kubelet will use pod states in the local storage instead. In addition, we have a garbage collector running in YardHub, which periodically removes useless pod states from the local cache. 
At the same time, we have the Yacht Controller Manager running on the cloud to prohibit API server from expelling parts from unready edge nodes. The second problem we wanted to resolve is how can we redirect the request from API server to edge nodes. It is very common that users may want to fetch logs of pods or execute commands in pods. This operation are normally conducted by using the kubectl command line tool, which will send HTTP request to the API server first, and then the API server will redirect the request to corresponding nodes. However, in a production environment, API server is usually located on the cloud, while edge nodes are located in users' private local networks. Therefore, API server cannot talk to edge node directly. We developed the Yacht Tunnel to tackle this problem. Yacht Tunnel using a client-server architecture. On each cloud node, we deploy a Yacht Tunnel server, while on each edge node, a Yacht Tunnel agent will be deployed. Even though the incoming traffic may be blocked outside of the private local network, edge nodes can still send requests out of the local network. Therefore, after Yacht Tunnel agent is set up, it will initiate a reverse connection and register itself on the Yacht Tunnel server. To redirect the request to the Tunnel server, we inject the rules to the host IP table which will redirect all outgoing HTTP requests with destination port 10,250 and 10,255 to the tunnel server. Yacht Tunnel used the API server network proxy internally. I will refer to API server network proxy as an AMP in the rest of this talk. AMP does not work with old version of Kubernetes. That does not support the egress selector. Therefore, we add an interceptor inside the tunnel server, which will encapsulate HTTP requests in a format that is compatible with AMP. Also, since the AMP uses gRPC protocol to transfer data between tunnel server and the tunnel agent, we are able to further reduce the bandwidth between the cloud nodes and the edge nodes. After a HTTP request is encapsulated, the AMP server will pick the corresponding AMP agent and send a request to it. The third challenge that prevents using Kubernetes in the edge computing environment is that Kubernetes does not support deploy workloads by regions. Since an edge cluster can be located across multiple network or geographic regions, an assistant or device setting in different regions may vary so users may want to deploy workloads by region. For example, the system architecture of edge nodes in a region 1 may be AMD64, while in a region 2 may be ARM64. If users want to run same workload in both regions, then they have to create two workloads with exactly the same configurations but only difference in container image name. This can cause exponential increase in the maintenance efforts with the increasing number of workloads. We developed the Yacht App Manager to ease the maintenance burden on users. Specifically, the Yacht App Manager contains two controllers, the No Pool controller and the United Deployment controller. The No Pool controller can group nodes into pools, can be nodes with same system architecture or nodes from the same network region, and then we can manage nodes in the same pool uniformly. For example, we can add labels, annotations, or tens to all nodes in the same pool. After we grouping nodes into pool, United Deployment Controller can deploy the workloads based on the same template but different configurations across pools. In addition, we leverage the service topology feature to bound the east-west network traffic within a pool. The last challenge is how can we support various kinds of edge device made by different manufacturers using different communication protocols. Existing solutions either need to change some key components of the Kubernetes significantly or require users to implement the device adapter or driver from scratch which result in large development effort and the loss of some upstream features. 
inspired by the Unix philosophy, do one thing and do it well. We believe that Kubernetes should focus on managing computing nodes, while the device management should be done by a mature edge computing platform. Therefore, we come up with the idea of integrating Edge X Foundry into OpenYard. Next, Yixing will give us some necessary backgrounds of Edge X Foundry and introduce how we combine Edge X Foundry with OpenYard. Okay, thanks, Charles, for the introduction. Hello, everyone. I'm Yixing from VMware City Office and also the maintainer of the OpenYard project. So. For those who are not familiar with Edge Foundry, I'd, I'd like to give a general introduction first. Then I will cover the OpenYurt and uh, Edgex integration overview. At last, there will be a demo to illustrate how it works. So what is Edgex Foundry? It is an open source, vendor neutral project and a Linux foundation uh, with Apache 2 license. It is also a microservice loosely coupled software a framework for IoT edge computing, and at the same time, it is hardware and OS agnostic. If we need to use one sentence to describe it, uh, EdgeX is a middleware that connects things with your IT environment. So, crudely speaking, uh, the surface of EdgeX constitutes a dual transformation engine. First is translating information coming from sensors and devices, uh, very hundreds of protocols and thousands of formats into EdgeX. And second, it can deliver data to applications, enterprise and cloud system over TCP IP based protocol in formats and the structure of customer choice. Now let's take a look at the EdgeX architecture from the south side to the north side. It have uh, it has four layers. The device service layer, which is responsible to connect all kinds of sensor devices or uh, actuators over hundreds of OT protocol. The core service layer, the supporting service layer, and uh, the application service layer. Let's take uh, the data flow in EdgeX system, for example, to illustrate how it works. First, uh, sensor data is collected by the device service from a scene and the data is passed to the core service for local persistence. Data is then passed to application service for uh, transformation, formatting, filtering, and can then be sent to NAS, to enterprise and cloud system when needed. Uh, data is then available for edge analysis and can trigger device activation through command service. Basically, there are two paths to control the edge device. One is through the cloud, the other is some automation control on the edge through some predefined logic through the user defined application service or root engine, or both. Since you can always uh, combine them together, like you can train in models on the cloud and uh, create an application service on the edge for in, uh, inference. Now let's take uh, a look at the EdgeX deployment scenario. Uh, in today's IoT landscape, it is imperative to leverage compute, storage, and network resource wherever they live. So in the first uh, scenario, you can deploy the device service on the Edge side and everything else in the cloud. This is for latency insensitive applications. In the second scenario, if the gateway uh, has enough uh, compute and st storage resource, you can deploy the full Ajax Foundry service on the gateway and gain good response time. In scenario 3, if the gateway is not that good, you can just deploy the device service and the core service there and move the application and the analytics to the server part. The fourth scenario is quite similar with the uh, first one, except it deploy uh, Ajax on the Fox server to gain better latency response. So we can see that the quantity and the function of microservice uh, deployed on a given node depends on the use cases and the capability of the hardware. 
Now let's take a look at the open URL and the address foundry integration. On the cloud side, we run the Yacht Control Manager, Yacht App Manager, and the Tunnel Server Manager. You can run it on any public, private, or hypercloud, or on-prem data center, which is according to your requirements. And on the edge side, besides the default Yacht Hub and the Tunnel Agent, we will deploy a new device controller, which is responsible for sync data between the EdgeX and the Kubernetes. The so, uh, X core service will also be deployed on the Edge side. <coughs> In some case, that the sensors direct connect gateway uh, doesn't have enough resource, we can just uh, deploy the EdgeX device service there. The Edge node can be either ARM based or X. 18.6 based. Now I will use a demo to illustrate how it works. Uh, let's take a look at the demo environment topology. We have a master node running on the cloud, and we have two work nodes running in the private network. The Pipe 4 is in my home office, and uh, the ebox is running in another location. Uh, they together compose a uh, Unified Kubernetes cluster, cross cloud, and edge, uh, with a different hardware architecture. We use Kube control uh, to get a node to check the node status in the cluster. This is the pipe fork node. We connect the temperature and the humidity sensors through GPIO pin 17. Uh, this is an RGB LED light connected to the Pi through GPIO pin 18, 19, and 20. Uh, this is the second work node, which is x86 based. We next will deploy the Edge X code service to the Pi 4 work node. We use Kube control get pod to check the deployment creating status. Uh, after a few minutes, we run the command again. We can see that the Ajax service are up and running on the Pi Fork node. The device controller will sync the device information to Kubernetes. We can use Kube control get device to list all the devices in the edgex. We can use Kube control get device profile to list all the device profile information. Also, we can use Kube control get device service to list uh, the device service information. Like uh, what we can do to the traditional Kubernetes object, we can change the device status by Kube control edit. First, we will run command kube control edit device name. We then set the device property light to color red as the desired value. We save and exit. You can see uh, Edge X will turn the LED light to red. And then next, we run Kube control at the device name again. Uh, this time, we'll set the desired color to blue. We save and exit. We can see Edge X turn the light to blue. Uh, last, uh, we run Kube control edit device name again and set the desired color to green. Then we save and exit. We can see EdgeX uh, will turn the LED light to green. So with EdgeX and OpenYurt, you can manage your LED devices in your Kubernetes native manner. Uh, thanks for listening our session. 
Now it's kill and a time.